Hello again and welcome. If you're just now coming to the series, I encourage you to kind of go back to the beginning to get a good running start. If you've already done all that, seen the past videos, then you should be familiar with how to create nodes and create edges in Network X and plot those uh, edges and nodes using matplotlib with and without labels. In this video, I want to start speaking about how to uh, take data that is stored outside of Python and process it through Network X and matplotlib. And we're going to do this in this video using Excel. And another video, the next one, we're going to do this using XML. And in another video, we're going to do it using JSON files. In the past videos, uh, my lecture series on an introduction to Python for digital humanities, I spoke at length about Excel, the benefits and the weaknesses of it. If you have data that is consistently structured, meaning it has the same number of attributes consistently across all rows, then Excel is fantastic. And when you're creating network maps, this is kind of precisely what we're going to be doing. We're going to have the same data for each row because we are simply going to be creating nodes uh, from two different columns in Excel. Uh, so the way in which you handle Excel in Python is via a module called XLRD. If you haven't installed this yet, I encourage you to pause the video now, go and use pip install in your command prompt, and pip install XLRD. This is the standard Python library for handling uh, Excel documents to read them. Uh, and you're going to be able to do that a lot more easily because XLRD comes with all the functions you need to analyze, interrogate, and work with Excel data. So when you import XLRD, you have to do a few things. Uh, the first thing we need to do is we need to establish a file that we're going to be using. And for me, I'm going to be using this. And all I'm doing right now is just copying the project path we're going to be using this sample data file that I've already created. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy it in here. I need to format this just a little bit to make sure it's re read correctly by, by Python. And once you have your file stored as a string, then what you need to do is you need to first create your network map. And you're going to do this by creating the object g is equal to nx.graph. Uh, and that's just going to be left like that. The next thing that we need to do is we need to create a list and we're going to create a list of names and we're going to store this right here because we're going to eventually in this Python script iterate through the Excel data through a for loop and we want to store the data outside of that for loop so that we can call it later on in the script. So we're going to just put that right there. Now we need to start interacting with XLRD. So we're going to do this and this is the Pythonic way to do it. We're going to create book. And book is an object that is going to be xlrd.open. We're going to use the open workbook function from the xlrd library. And we're going to tell it to open file. And it's simply going to open up this file here. Uh, in Python, it's typically standard to store your file as a string object and just call it later on in the script so it looks prettier. You don't have a long string existing uh, down here. So the other thing that we need to do is all that we've done is we've just created an object of book, which is the whole Excel file. The next thing that we need to do is we need to specify which sheet in the book. And the way we do that is we use book dot and we use the sheet by index function. And we are going to tell it to grab sheet zero. In Python, zero is going to be the first sheet. Remember, Python in a list, everything, you always work with zero first. Uh, so zero is equal to one in this case. So once we have that, now we've got sheet loaded as an object of memory. And that's going to be uh, the sheet's entire data. So what we need to do is we need to get the data from that sheet. And the way in which we do that is we go for row in range, and we say sheet dot in rows. And what this is doing is we're saying for each item in a range of the number of rows in the sheet, this is the uh, in rows command, we want that's going to tell it how many times to iterate because if we don't have this it's going to keep on iterating and it's going to return an error once it gets to a row that doesn't exist because there's no data there so we need to iterate the strictly to the length of the excel spreadsheet and let me pull up this excel spreadsheet right now for you i've just used a online random name generator and i've created a, a series of 50 names uh, 50 relationships this is going to be person one and this is going to be person two. And if you notice, the name Tobias appears multiple times in both lists. This is because I want Tobias to 
uh, have a lot of relationships so we can kind of see it mapped out correctly. Uh, and we can kind of see the, uh, the power of processing data through Excel and Network X. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. And what I want to do is I want to take that data, I want to gather the data from that row, and I want to iterate across it row by row. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do row slice. This is a very important function in XLRD, row slice. And I'm going to tell it that I want it to slice the row, which is going to be uh, row zero, so the first row, then row one, then row two, and it's going to iterate down through the entire Excel spreadsheet until it gets to the last row. And I'm going to create that object data. So data is going to basically be all of the information on a given row. But that's not good enough. I need that information stored individually. So I don't have to do this, actually. I can do it a different way. I'm doing this so that you get a sense of the basics. So I need person one to be equal to data zero, which is going to be column zero, which is column A in Excel. And I want to return the value of that. For person two, I want to do the same thing and call column B, which is column one in Python. And just to demonstrate what's happening here, I'm just going to print off person one just to show you how this is working. And we should see all the people in column A right there. And we can do the same thing for person two, but I'm not going to. So why is this useful? Well, it's useful because now that I've got this, these individual objects from each row, I can append my names list so that I can call it in Network X. And if you remember in Network X, the list needs to be a list of tuples. So I create one parenthesis for the function and another parenthesis for the tuple that is going to be created for the list. And what this is going to do is it's going to go through each row, obtain these two pieces of information and use them to create a tuple. And it's going to append that tuple to the list. And it's going to do that 50 times as it goes through all of the Excel data. To demonstrate that, I'm going to print names. So it's going to print it outside of this loop, and it's going to render everything as it should. And I see it down here, a series of tuples. So now that we know that that works, we need to start taking that data and working with it through Network X. And the way in which we're going to do that is we're going to use the add edges from function. We're going to set that to names. Remember, the add edges from allows us to pass a list of tuples into Network X to then map it. And now what we're going to do is we're going to tell it to draw graph G, and we're going to have it plot dot show. So this is going to take all that data, draw it through Network X, and then map it through matplotlib. And when I run this, we should get a network graph. And it might not look when you look like a series of edges here. It might just look like a bunch of random dots on the map. But when we zoom in, we make it larger, we see that edges do in fact exist. One of the problems that we see right now is that we have a node size that is a little too large. And in a later video, I'm going to show you how to do more advanced things with nodes to adjust the size based on frequency so that your images, your figures, look a lot neater in the, in the outcome. But it's still not exactly clear who's who in that map. So let's pass our with labels argument and set it equal to true. And now when we map it, we will see that all the names appear. And again, these names are a little bit congested. We could uh, actually adjust the font size and everything like that, but I'm not going to do that in this video. This was just to give you a sense for how to take data from Excel, process it in Python using the Network X library, and then create an image using the matplotlib library. And that's what we've done so far. One of the things I want to mention real quickly to kind of give a prelude to what we're going to talk about in later lectures is what's happening here. Why do we see the nodes all kind of appearing on the outskirts here while in here we have this really high concentration? Well, what's happening is, is Tobias is actually functioning as what we call a cluster. That is a grouping of nodes in a concentrated area. And what's happening is the algorithm that's being used to create this network map is actually propelling all the other nodes away based on that algorithm. So Tobias's strength and this cluster strength is actually resisting all the other nodes. And that's what's allowing it to be rendered visually. 
Again, I'm going to speak at length about network layouts in uh, matplotlib and networkx in a later lecture. For right now, however, you should have the tools that you need to go through XLRD, uh, store the data, and then call the data using the XLRD module from Excel, processing that data in Python, rendering it as a list, and making that list processed by our network X add from edges function, and then drawing that information, that data, and then showing it through matplotlib. We covered a lot in this lecture. I highly recommend that you take time and try to repeat what I've done here. Uh, you're going to learn through trial and error. You're going to make mistakes and that's okay. You might forget the colon here on the for loop. Uh, I still do that myself constantly. Just play around with it, make the mistakes, and you'll eventually just get it down where it becomes second nature. But try to make your own set of data in Excel. Try to make person one and person two, and try to create, recreate what I've done here with maybe a group of your friends. In a later video, I'm going to show you how to add extra attributes to these relationships, because not all relationships are the same. Some people are friends. Some people are connected socially. Some people are connected familially. Some people are connected spiritually. Uh, this is going to be a way that we can actually make these relationships more nuanced so we can show how individuals do not all share the same types of relationships. But we're going to do that in a later video. For right now, just get the basics down of uh, processing the data using XLRD. So thank you for listening, and I hope you've found this useful.